On today's episode, we are getting into the latest space news, including Russia is headed back to the moon for the first time since 1976, Starliner issues force yet another delay, and an AI search algorithm spots a potentially dangerous near-Earth asteroid. This is the space race. It has been 47 years since Russia has sent their own mission to the moon, but on August 10th, a Soyuz rocket lifted off from the Vostokny Cosmodrome carrying a robotic lander that will end Roscosmos' long absence from the space race. The Luna 25 spacecraft is on a much faster approach to the moon than the more fuel-efficient modern flight plans we've been seeing from state-run agencies like India's ISRO or commercial launch providers. The Soyuz upper stage has already sent the Luna Glob lander payload into orbit around the moon, a quick five-day trip compared to the month-long journey that India's Chandrayaan-3 lander has had to endure, and both landers are due to touch down at the lunar south pole on the same day, August 23rd. The Luna Glob lander itself weighs about 3,900 pounds, stands roughly 10 and a half feet tall, and is equipped with eight scientific instruments, a mechanical arm, and a bucket that it can use to collect samples of the lunar regolith. If you're all thinking, this sounds familiar, well, you're absolutely correct. Russia is hardly the first space agency to send a lander to this exact spot. The United Arab Emirates launched their Rashid rover in December 2022 on the doomed Hakuto-R lander mission run by Japanese company iSpace. NASA's Lunar Flashlight Orbiter was launched on the same day and also failed to achieve its goals. The aforementioned Chandrayaan-3 lander is supposed to land at the same time as Russia's lander, potentially giving both countries the opportunity to land the first vehicles in that region, as well as making India and Russia rivals for the first time. And that's just the current missions. Japan's JAXA, Intuitive Machines, Astro Robotics Peregrine, and even SpaceX has their Starship lander prototype mission on the books for the moon's south pole. This is because any successful long-term crewed mission to the moon will require water, something we are pretty sure is available at the Southern Pole. NASA's Artemis missions are focused on this area for that reason, and so are the many landers that hope to bring back solid proof of water ice from this region, which is mostly the goal of Russia's Luna 25 mission, but also to prove that they still have the capability to land a vehicle on the moon. Before their attack on the Ukraine, Russia was still partnering with the European Space Agency and NASA. Luna 25 was originally envisioned as a collaborative mission, in fact. But both the ESA and NASA cut off their support when war broke out, and without the aid of the two largest and most experienced agencies in the world, Russia has to try to do this alone. That's not to say Roscosmos is particularly short-handed, though. The agency might not be what it once was, but Roscosmos led the world to space and the moon back in the first space race, only failing to beat Americans to landing a crew on the moon. The agency itself has plenty of experience landing robotic vehicles there, at least. It's a little strange seeing Russia competing with countries and companies who are relatively new at lunar operations, but it has been a very long time since they attempted any missions to the moon. NASA has tons of international help, and they still haven't sent their own landers there just yet. But the big question is what Russia plans to do with their data if they can successfully land their vehicle. No one is willing to work with them, and they definitely couldn't fund their own crewed mission to the moon's south pole. Maybe if India's lander fails, they can use their data to make some sort of deal with NASA or China. But more likely, Luna 25 is being undertaken to publicly prove that Roscosmos can still handle bigger missions on their own before the new space race leaves the Russians in the dust. If you're interested in cutting-edge sound technology, I want to introduce you to Endel, an advanced system that utilizes the principles of neuroscience and psychoacoustics to create real-time personalized soundscapes. Endel offers three scientifically designed modes, Relax Mode, engineered to calm the mind by employing specific frequencies and patterns that evoke comfort and safety, Focus Mode utilizes sound engineering to increase concentration and extend productivity periods. Sleep Mode features meticulously curated soft, gentle sounds to facilitate deep sleep. And I've personally used Endel Sleep Mode every night for two years and can attest to its efficacy. Beyond personal experiences, Endel has demonstrated assistance in managing ADHD, 
tinnitus, and sleep disorders. Endel's patented core technology, Endel Pacific, is a standout feature. It's not just a static experience, it adapts in real time to personal factors such as your location, weather, and heart rate. The resulting soundscape is personalized and optimized for maximum effect, making it a unique and powerful tool. If you're facing challenges in sleeping, concentrating, or relaxing, or if you simply want to explore this technology-advanced audio experience, be among the first 100 people to download Endel using the link below, and you'll receive a free week to explore these scientifically crafted soundscapes. I wholeheartedly recommend trying Endel, a product I use daily, and join me in a journey towards a more focused, healthier, and happier life. Many of you will be unsurprised to learn that veteran aerospace giant Boeing has been forced to delay the next test launch of their Starliner crew capsule yet again, this time for potentially over a year. Back in June, NASA and Boeing made a joint press conference discussing the capsule safety issues. These involved some substandard parachute systems, specifically the links used in securing the lines that connect the parachutes to the capsule, as well as a type of flammable tape which had been used across the entire pod to organize and shield the wire harness that powers the capsule systems. At the time, the extent of the repairs and upgrades made NASA bench the prototype crew capsule indefinitely, a tough pill to swallow for the Boeing team to be sure, but since their next test involves launching with a crew on board, NASA is taking zero chances. Boeing has been working on Starliner since 2010, but much more seriously since 2014, when Starliner and the Dragon capsule made by SpaceX were chosen to supplement the aging Soyuz capsules that NASA had been using to service the International Space Station. But while SpaceX cleared their hurdles relatively easily and finished their testing in 2020 with the Demo-2 mission, Starliner faced delay after delay. Originally, this was due to make its first uncrewed orbital flight test in 2019, but that flight suffered a major software malfunction that caused it to land without reaching orbit, let alone docking with the ISS as had been the plan. Then in 2020, a second test was prepared, but again, software problems caused more delays, and the launch slipped to August 2021, when a problem with the vehicle's propulsion system valves caused the launch to slip again to September, and then all the way into 2022, as Boeing technicians just could not find what was causing the issue. Finally, on May 19th, 2022, Starliner officially launched their uncrewed second orbital flight test, which also almost failed. The orbital maneuvering thrusters failed during the vehicle's orbital insertion burn, and while the ground team was able to compensate and get the capsule all the way to the ISS, another software glitch and some hardware malfunctions almost caused Starliner to have to abandon docking. Starliner has been a millstone around Boeing's neck for years now, suffering failures and delays, while the SpaceX Dragon capsule commissioned by NASA at practically the same time has been in active service and iteration for years. The current service missions for Starliner are slated for 2025 and will allow SpaceX and their Dragon capsule to take a bit of a break. After all, NASA commissioned both vehicles so they could have some redundancy. For their part, NASA has already invested all the money they were going to invest in this vehicle, so as long as they get a working capsule by 2025, they are happy to let Boeing keep stepping on rakes. But the Starliner team is definitely running out of time. If they can't get their pod to pass safety checks in time for their test launch, they might have to abandon their contract. Earth's Asteroid Defense Network just got an AI upgrade and it's already found a potentially dangerous candidate. Heliolink 3D is the first of its kind, a learning artificial intelligence that uses long-term visual data from asteroid surveys to find objects that human eyes have either missed or just haven't been able to see. Like many current AI programs, Heliolink 3D takes in data and uses it to train appropriate responses. In this case, Helio's designers are trying to train the algorithm to spot asteroids flying too close to Earth using data from telescopes across the world. Asteroid researchers have done some incredible work finding dangerous near-Earth objects and have codified some very efficient procedures along the way. For ATLAS, the NASA-funded asteroid survey run at the University of Hawaii, the procedure is to have the network of ground-based telescopes set in Hawaii, South Africa, and come 2025, the Chilean Andes take pictures of specific parts of the sky. 
The search is made possible because the team has found that they don't really need to study the whole sky, they don't even need to study just our solar system. The types of objects that could pose a threat tend to be in the cislunar space, the area just within 5 million miles of Earth's orbit. Objects in this space are categorized as potentially hazardous asteroids, or PHAs. This narrows the search so much that the astronomers can use their telescopes much more efficiently. They pick a spot and take just four shots per night. If they don't notice a suspiciously moving point of light streaking along a line of travel, they move on. And to their credit, the Atlas researchers have found over 2,350 potentially hazardous asteroids this way. But scientists estimate that number is only about half of what should be out there, so they brought on some algorithmic help. This sort of work is perfect for programs like HelioLink 3D. Scientists have an efficient and well-tested procedure and literally years of visual data to train the system on, and once they activated the bot, it found something astronomers missed. 2022 SF289 is a rock about the size of two soccer fields, and it happens to pass just 140,000 miles from the Earth in between us and the moon for those keeping track. Rocks like this are very hard to spot because they're coming in so fast. In fact, this very asteroid had eluded discovery by the Atlas team because it was moving too fast to be captured by the usual four-picture procedure we talked about earlier, and they had observed the asteroid three times but on four separate nights, so it was never caught by human researchers. But this is where an AI algorithm really shines, because Helio found it by digging through years worth of pictures from the Atlas network and putting together the puzzle. A person might have been able to do that if they had known something was there to find, but HelioLink 3D just blitzed through the data faster than a person could and used the procedures to tag anything suspicious. Even though this new asteroid isn't likely to be an actual danger to our planet, this is still a huge success. Many industry experts have been sounding the alarm about the need for more support in the hunt for dangerous objects for years now. It's one of the few threats we can do something about, and with advances in technology like HelioLink 3D, we are closing in on a reality where we can actually know that we are safe from any world-ending impacts. Meet us back here every week for more updates on everything aerospace industry and interstellar exploration related. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up today if you liked it, that really helps us out for real. And subscribe to the Space Race for more videos just like this. We do one long form essay and one news update every week. And if you'd like more, we've got two more on the screen for you right now.